Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Thursday, October 28th, 2021. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Department of Gender Affairs is inviting men of Nevis to commit to making a positive difference in the life of a young male. The department will shortly launch its boys' mentorship program and is inviting men on the island to volunteer. This program is one with a mission to empower at-risk youth in our community to make positive life choices that enable them to maximize their personal potential. We are making this special appeal to the leaders in your various spheres and circles of influence, in business, in skilled work, wherever you find yourself. We're inviting you, men of Nevis, to sign up to be a mentor to some young boy who is in need of help. In keeping with the Department of Gender Affairs celebration of Men's Month, the Boys Mentorship Program will be launched in November. Our young men need guidance. Our boys need someone to look up to. And so if you know that you are a man who has something to give, some information, some guidance to show some young man the way out of deviant behavior, trouble, and, and a life of crime, to a life of commitment to good social values, if you are the one, I'm inviting you. Come to the Ministry of Health and Gender Affairs in Charlestown or the Department of Gender Affairs on Government Road. Come and sign up and volunteer yourself. Commit to working with the young boys at least once a week and ensure that you make a difference. And maybe you know someone who can be a mentor. You can do the same. Come, contact us and refer someone who you think can make the difference in the life of a young boy, in the life of our community of Nevis. Gender Affairs Officer Mario Philip says the department will offer training and support to men who participate in its mentorship program. We have a well-structured program and assistance to give to you so that if you're feeling that you, you, you want to be a mentor but you're not so certain, as to what to do, we've got you covered. We will take you through the basis of everything that's required and so that you can be a proficient mentor. Again, that's, that would, our training would be on the 16th of November and the Tuesday following. So we invite you to sign up. Celebrated in more than 80 countries, International Men's Day, November 19th, acknowledges the positive value men bring to the world, their families and communities. Minister of Foreign Affairs of St. Kitts and Davis, Honorable Mark Brantley, engaged his colleague, Her Excellency Dr. Marta Lucia Ramirez, Vice President and Foreign Minister of Colombia, in a diplomatic exchange in the margins of the 10th Italy, Latin America and the Caribbean Conference in Rome, Italy. Brantley said he was honored to meet Her Excellency Ramirez, a champion for women's rights and the first woman to serve as Vice President of Colombia. During the October 25, 2021 meeting, the diplomats discussed critical issues of bilateral and multilateral relevance to St. Kitts, Nevis and Colombia. The range of issues included climate change, climate finance, greater cooperation in security, culture and language, and a vision for a broader Caribbean, Latin American political and economic alliance. Colombia responded positively to requests for assistance with respect to airport security needs in St. Kitts and Davis. The Federation of St. Kitts and Davis established diplomatic relations with Colombia in 1984, and the citizens of both countries enjoy a reciprocal visa waiver arrangement that allows for visa-free visits for up to 90 days. The 10th Italy, Latin America and the Caribbean Conference was convened under the theme People, Planet, Prosperity, the future of an age-old partnership. The roundtable issues discussed related to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations 2030 Agenda and the post-pandemic recovery. 
Italy's president, Sergio Mattarella, affirmed that the European nation wants to contribute to the return of Latin America and the Caribbean to the European agenda as a strategic centrality. In celebration of World Food Day, the Department of Agriculture is hosting an event dubbed Market Street Affair on Friday, October 29th, 2021. Ermine Hendrickson, owner of Val's Delight, is one of the vendors who will be present at the affair on Friday, is encouraging persons to support the event. I'm inviting everyone to the Agriculture Department all day fear at Market Street on Friday 29th from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come on out and you will see agro-processors, uh, farmers, everything related to agriculture. She then listed some of the items she will have on sale. I will be there with all of my local products that are locally made. You have tamarind wine, you have pepper vinegar, you have different wines. You have passion fruit syrup, chutneys, golden apple and papaya chutneys. You have guava jam and you have mango jam and many more. Chief Extension Officer Steve Reed is also encouraging persons to support the local farmers and agro-processors. I'm encouraging one and all to come on out this coming Friday at Market Street where we'll have our market street of here. We have farmers confirm, agro-processors confirm, the fishing complex confirm, you have the meat guys will be there, and a whole range of other stuff. And to add to that, entertainment will also be there with some pleasant music to soothe you while you're shop. So come on out this coming Friday to Market Street and buy your local products. Still to come, St. Kitts and Nevis COVID-19 vaccine rollout and success story. The details when we return. The population and housing census will be conducted this year. And so I'm taking this opportunity to invite as many persons as possible to participate. The census produces valuable information that can help all of us. The Ministry of Health and Gender Affairs depends on such information so that we can make informed decisions as it pertains to public health and other related services. We are indeed happy to be a part of this very important event. It's you, me, us, 2021 Census. Hashtag be counted. Welcome back. The St. Kitts and Davis COVID-19 vaccine rollout is a success story. So noted Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws as she gave the Health Emergency Operating Committee's situation report on Wednesday, October 27th. Now when you look at the latest information uh, coming out of the World Health Organization, all territories around the world are asked to achieve the WHO call to action to have at least 40% of its population vaccinated by December 2021. And it's with good news we share with you that the Federation has surpassed this target, this cut point, this benchmark. And I dare say we surpassed this benchmark round about the end of August, early September of this year. The Pan American Health Organization will be acknowledging the Federation's achievement by publishing an article on the Federation's strong leadership in the vaccine rollout. So actually this is a success story. St. Kitts and Nevis is the first independent territory in the Caribbean subregion to cross this benchmark. And this article will have a global reach. At Wednesday's National Emergency Operations Center COVID-19 briefing, Dr. Laws gave an update on the vaccination status of St. Kitts and Nevis. Total adults 
in the population fully vaccinated, 72%. Total children, uh, 12 to 17 years in our population uh, equal, that are fully vaccinated equals 8.2%. Now, when you look at the total number of adults fully vaccinated, total number of children fully vaccinated, and you uh, put that over our total population, that gives us the percentage of the total population fully vaccinated, that equals 51.3%. St. Kitts and Davis launched its COVID-19 vaccination program on February 22nd, 2021. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Shalisa martin Clark, on Wednesday, October 27th, highlighted the important role of compliance officers in Davis at a ceremony to recognize the compliance officer's completion of COVID-19 security training. martin Clark noted that they are an integral part of the nation's COVID-19 response. A compliance officer is responsible for ensuring that individual, business, and company operations comply with internal or external standards, or in this case, comply with the regulations and laws pertaining to COVID-19 or COVID-19 pandemic response. Your role is to monitor the day-to-day -day activities to ensure social distancing, hygiene, and other practices are being maintained to protect health and reduce the spread of the virus. Now a site here could be schools, businesses, church. As a compliance officer, you're also an educator. And as an educator, you must be familiar with the Quarantine Act and the prevailing statutory rules and orders that are in place. You have the opportunity to promote the awareness of how the virus is transmitted and ways of managing the risk of exposure and infection by reminding persons to adhere to the established protocols. Permanent Secretary Martin Clark, who presented the certificates of participation to the new compliance officers, implored them to be mindful of their responsibility as monitoring and evaluation officers, educators, and enforcers. As an enforcer, you will need to ensure that everyone follows the rules or protocols that are in place to mitigate the risk of exposure or the spread of the disease. For those of us or those of you who go contrary to the established rules and regulations, as an enforcer, you are in a position to recommend or impose penalties accordingly. You are the persons who have to help us ensure business continuity during this time of the pandemic. Ten persons completed the COVID-19 security training and will shortly undertake the task of compliance officers. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.